Hi, I love cryptic crosswords and I hope you will learn to love them as well. Um, whether you're new to them or uh, you've started you know, doing some or maybe you're an absolute expert in them, maybe you enjoy this video because I'm going to go through this cryptic crossword and, and solve it clue by clue and give some pointers to beginners as to how to solve the crossword. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing I would say about all cryptic crossword clues is that they're basically made up of two parts. There's a part called the definition, which is basically, it's usually at the start or the end of the clue. And it basically is the synonym for the, for the answer or the definition of the answer. And then there's another part of the clue, which is more of a wordplay, which also gets you to the answer. So in effect, every cryptic crossword clue has two ways of getting to the answer. So in some ways, it's almost easier than a normal, straightforward crossword. Um, but the way the clues are worded can th really throw you off the scent. Um, so uh, my first tip for reading cryptic crossword clues is to try not to get sucked into the reading the sentence and trying to make a meaning out of the sentence. It really is, in a way, try and identify the definition and then try and see what the wordplay is. Um, and then it's literally word by word. You're taking each word in turn almost. Um, there, there's some sort of code that give you the, the clue. So, um, so let's get, uh, let's get started. See where I go with this crossword. Okay. Um, so one across, uh, have a pet baby owl worth being trained. Um, now looking at this, I think but this is an anagram clue. So some, some cryptic crosswords are anagrams, clues. So there'll be a definition and then you have to make an anagram out of some of the other words that are in the clue. And the way you can identify anagram clues is by certain words. Now this word here, trained, um, it's given off, to me, it's given off some sort of anagram clue. And I, I think the definition is have a pet. And therefore, this clue will be solved by um, working out what baby owl worth is an anagram of. So being trained is the sort of what they call an indicator word, um, which shows that there may be an anagram here. Um, so where baby owl and worth need to be trained, as in they need to be transformed in some way to give a an answer that means have a pet. Um, now, this anagram it's quite tricky. Baby owl worth. I think I'll come back to this, but it's definitely an anagram of baby owl worth. Um, and it does mean have a pet, but we'll, we'll, maybe we'll come back to it. Let's try, let's try one down. So one down is goods transported if crafts at sea. Um, so again, when you start doing cryptic crosswords, there's certain phrases that indicate certain things about the clue. And at sea, almost always, not every time though, but almost always also indicates an anagram. Um, so the chances are that this clue, the definition is uh, goods transported. And um, it's an anagram of if, if crafts. So the, the letters of if crafts are at sea, as in they're a bit messed up, they're a bit all over the place. So what's an anagram of if crafts that could mean goods transported? Um, I think this is, let me just click on the right thing. I think this is traffic. Yeah, traffic. So it's an anagram of if crafts and it means, you know, goods are transported. Um, okay, so from here, let's try, I don't know, let's go for 13 across um cooks accommodating current bosses um now what is the definition and what is the wordplay um cooks accommodating current so when you have a like a verb in in a, in a cryptic crossword clue that sometimes that, that means that's part of the wordplay so if cooks was accommodating current but that tends to be in a cryptic crossword so maybe a, a word or, or a letter for current is being accommodated by a word for cooks. So it's sort of placed in the word for cooks somehow. So that would imply that bosses is the, is the definition. So another word for cooks 
is shifts. And um, a word or letter for current, sometimes you use abbreviations or um, scientific uh, symbols within cryptic courses. So uh, uh, it was a letter for current could be I. It was in the, you know, the, the old um, equation V equals IR, where I stands for current, etc. So if you put the letter I into chefs, you can get the word, you know, not that word, you can get the word chiefs. I can't type today. Chiefs. So you see the, the letter I is within chefs, and, that, and chiefs is a, a word for bosses. Yeah, we'll go back to this one. So chief is a word for bosses, yeah. Chiefs is a word for bosses. So therefore, that looks fairly, I'm fairly confident with that one. Um, let's try three down since we have a letter. Let's go for another three down. Um, wicked bats flew round. Hmm. So what could this mean? Um... Bats is another one of these words, again, I mean, I don't normally come across so many anagrams at the beginning of a crossword, but uh, bats is another one of those words like at sea that usually indicates an anagram. So as if, uh, you know, the letters have gone crazy and you can readjust them and make a new word. So there's also nine letters in the in the answer. So if you look at flu and round together, <clears throat> add up those letters, they come to nine. So I reckon this is an anagram of flu and round, and it means wicked. Um, just briefly looking at, it, I think, I think wonderful is a is an anagram of flu round. Let me put it in. Um, and I suppose wicked can these days anyway. Wicked can be a like a term for something that's really good. So it's wonderful. It can be wicked. So I think that's. Yeah, I think wonderful looks good there. Okay, let's let's move on. Um what two we try now? We'll try four let's try four down since we're here. Pardon bowler, maybe after wide. Um now this one you know, this after is implying like the placement of a word or something after a word for wide. Now again, we we'll go back to abbreviations. There are a lot of abbreviations that are used in cryptic crosswords, and I believe they can only abbreviate words that are, have official abbreviations. Um, and cryptic crossword setters love seem to love cricket abbreviations. There's a lot of abbreviations from cricket, like wide and run, etc. Um, so I think this, based on that, I think this part of the um, this part of the clue is probably the wordplay and pardon is probably the definition. So it's a word that means pardon and some wordplay of bowler maybe after wide. So let's, so that would imply like a wide is a W in cricket. So I'll put wide at the beginning because the next part comes after wide. So a three letter word for bowler, um, and it's, I don't think it's bowler as in, you know, the person who throws the ball in cricket. I think it's more, I think a more bowler hat. So if we put hat after the W there, we end up with what, which I suppose is another word for pardon. Um, although I was always told never to say what. It's always excuse me or pardon. Anyway, um, so <clears throat> you can see there. So pardon, bowler, maybe after wide. The definition was pardon. And the word play is bowler, maybe, after wide. And maybe just means, you know, it's another word for bowler. Um, okay, let's try nine across. And we've got quite a few letters there. Nine across. Benefit from saying about vehicle temperature. This, when you see from, quite a lot of the times that indicates where the definition is. So, that would say to me the benefit is probably the definition and we get the benefit from this wordplay as in saying about vehicle temperature. Now vehicle in cryptic crosswords is used a lot and it can be car, 
or van or bus. Um, so it's probably from this, it says from saying about vehicle temperature. Um, about would indicate to me that a word for saying is around a word for vehicle. Um, which would indicate maybe, let's say if it's van, based on what I see here in the, in the clues, maybe van looks like could go here. So, okay, yeah, it looks like this is advantage. So what is that exactly? How do we get there? So we have um, the vehicle's van. Yeah, we can see that. Um, another word for a saying is an adage, A-D-A-G-E there. And then the T is from temperature, which is one of these abbreviations again for temperature. So advantage means benefit. I think I'm happy with that. Okay. Two down. T's perhaps collected by golfer I've requested. <clears throat> okay. This is... This looks like, when you see collected, this looks like a, it's a hidden hidden word clue. It's another type of clue you get in cryptic crosswords. So um, where the word is actually written in the crossword somewhere, in the clue, sorry, somewhere, um, just plain as day. Sometimes it can be written forward, sometimes it can be written backwards. Depends on what the wordplay says. Um, so I think the word, the definition is, T's perhaps, so T's, and you can see here what the the setter's trying to lead us down the path of thinking about golf, you know, golf tees, golfers, etc. Um, but maybe <clears throat> I think in this case, the tees is also a river, um, in the northeast of England, I think. Um, so maybe it's a word for that, like the by. Okay, so it's a hidden, it's a hidden word, so I can see. If you look here, collected by golfer, I've requested, maybe we'll see it better down here. There's a hidden word there. Golfer, I've, I've requested, R-I-V-E-R, -E river. So it is a hidden word clue. Um, and it's another word for tease, you know, tease perhaps. What is tease? Perhaps it could be a river. Okay, so let's try 11 across now since we got quite a lot of those letters. <clears throat> um, first class beer regularly ignored. Now, regularly is a word and ignored. There, you see these quite a bit in cryptic crosswords. Regularly usually means, you know, if you look at the letters in a word, um, and the, the regular words are like the, the regular letters of a word are the first, third, fifth, etc. Or it could be the second, fourth, sixth letter of a word. But we're ignoring those letters. So we're ignoring, in this case, I think maybe we're ignoring the, if, uh, this is a um, some sort of word play on beer, which implies then that the, the definition is first. And then it's some sort of word play with class and beer. Um, if we look at beer to start with, regularly ignoring um, beer would be to ignore the first letter and the third letter. That leaves us ER, and this probably goes here. And then we have a word for class, and together it all may, means first. So another word for class, again, very common in cryptic crosswords, is form. And here we have former, which means first. Okay, hopefully this makes sense so far. Um, let's try 14 down since we've got a letter there. Add to popular line. So where is the definition and where is the wordplay? Um, from, the, from what you'll see sometimes in cryptic crosswords, popular is a very... It's a very popular uh, word to have in cryptic crosswords, funnily enough, and usually it means in. When something's in, it's popular. Um, so add to popular line. So that would imply that this, maybe based on the letters we have so far, maybe I would put in there. 
um, which then makes me feel that line is probably the, the, the other part of the wordplay. So popular line is probably the wordplay. So a word for popular in and another word for line. And it means add to. Um, trying to think of a word. Okay, so it's probably, okay, increase means if you add to something, you increase it. Uh, and a crease is a, another word for a line. If you get a crease in your, in your shirt, it's a line in your shirt, isn't it? Or also a crease in cricket. I think it's a line. But really, I've never, I've only played cricket once, but it's a line in the wicket, isn't it? So I'm fairly confident of that one, 14. Um, let's try 18 across. Um, bizarre mess I clear up. Um, this I would say, again, we've had them before, maybe you're starting to spot these now, I'm not sure, but this looks like a, an anagram to me. So, so I've got C and L here, and I can see C and L in this part of the clue around here. So based on that, you know, it looks like maybe this is the wordplay, and this part, the bizarre part, is the meaning. So we're saying basically mess the words I clear up. So if we mess these letters up, we'll get a, a word that means peculiar. Oh, it means peculiar. It is peculiar. <laughs> so, but I had it myself there, so it means bizarre. So it's peculiar. I was thinking of the answer as I was talking there. Okay, that makes sense. So let's go back to that. So mess was the anagram indicator. I clear up are the words, the letters you have to do something with, make an anagram of them, and it means bizarre. Um, okay, so let's try 18 down. Fairly small. Minded about Queen. Queen is a word used a lot in cryptic crosswords, and it's um, sometimes it's an you know R, as in Regina. King and Queen are used quite a bit. Um, when the Queen was alive, and you know, the Queen of England was alive, it sometimes it would mean ER. Um, so that would. Think about that, and and small minded is about queen, so that looks like that's you no know, small minded is about queen, so that looks like that's the wordplay, and this means fairly. Um, begins with a P, so small minded could be petty about queen. So if we put the word petty about R, which would be Regina, we could get make the word pretty, can't we? Was that can mean fairly, as in you know. I'm pretty tired. I'm fairly tired. Yeah, I think that's that's okay. Twenty six across. Let's try this. Art gallery frames initially showing discernment. Um, initially is one of these words you get a lot in cryptic crosswords. It usually means the first letter of a word. Um. So it could be F or it could be S because it's probably relating to frames or showing. And sometimes it relates to the whole thing, the whole sentence. Um, art gallery, again, I've seen this a few times. Art gallery comes up a lot and it's usually the Tate. So if we have, if no one what I know here about this, uh, about what letters we've already got, it looks like Tate could be in there, which means initially we'll refer to S. And the thing, the clue means discernment. Um, so art gallery is a Tate around an S. If you put Tate around S, you get taste, which is, I know, means discernment, doesn't it? Um, let's try 21 across. Uh, work out tax without sign of hesitation. Um, does it mean sign of hesitation or work? Sign of hesitation, again, sometimes in these crosswords, it means er, you know, er. Um, that could be, it could be a word for tax and you take away er. Um, 
Hmm, an unexpected interruption there. Sorry about that, but life gets in the way sometimes. I have uh, had to go and sort some things out with the family. So I'm back now. Hopefully I can get to the end of this video. This is my first one doing this, so I'm supposed to be expected, the odd uh, unexpected uh, interruption. Now I'll try and sort that out for future videos. Anyway, where was I? I think it was at 21 across. Work out tax without sign of hesitation. Um, I was talking about hesitation being an ER, usually. Um, it could be a word for tax with the letters ER taken out, as in tax without ER. Can't think of a word for tax right now. Um, okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll come back to it. Let's uh, try something else. Let's try 28 across. Um, telling niece dubious facts. Um, telling niece dubious. Okay, this, this again, we've had a few of them already. Um, this looks like another anagram one. Um, the, the word is giving me the anagram vibe is dubious. So, um, it's probably an anagram of telling niece, and it means the definition is going to be facts. Um, just double check. So, telling niece has got seven and five, 12 letters. Yes, 12 letter answer. Um, dubious is saying of telling niece the letters there is dubious, so make it, you know, mix them up a little bit. And the definition will be facts. So, what can be an anagram of telling niece? Um, I think looking at it looks like intelligence, maybe, is the word. I'm going to type that in. Intelligence. I suppose it does mean facts. Uh, if you have intelligence on something, you got the facts. Um, okay. I'm happy enough with that. I think intelligence is right. So it's another another anagram. Um, let's try 24 down, maybe. Let's try 24 down. Neil Armstrong somewhat upset being in outer space. And here's a question mark. Um, sometimes question marks mean absolutely nothing. Um, sometimes they mean the whole sentence, you know, it is some sort of joke or some sort of pun. Um, I don't think, just from it saying Neil Armstrong, I don't think that's the definition. So the definition must be at this end of the sentence. So it must be outer space or something like that. Um, but there's another word in here. There's two words in here that are that you see a lot in these crosswords. Um, one is somewhat and the other one is upset. Um, somewhat usually refers to like a hidden word clue. So we're saying um, the word is in so, you know, somewhat of this, somewhat of Neil Armstrong. There's a word. Um, I'm just looking at Neil Armstrong. I don't think I can't see anything obvious there. Um, but then upset refers to it's either some part of Neil Armstrong is an anagram, or upset can also mean like turned upside down. So maybe if we look at Neil Armstrong like from right to left instead of left to right and looking for like a hidden word that means outer space or something. Um, means. Let's just look at Neil Armstrong. Okay, there's a word there, look. Alien. And that's, a, oh, a being in outer space. Yeah, a being in outer space would be an alien, wouldn't it? So that looks pretty healthy answer to me. Um, okay, let's try 20 down. Still oddly in French church. Still. Um, there's a few words here that you get a lot in these crosswords. So oddly is one of them. And that's one of these words, a wordplay word, um, where you just take the odd letters from a particular word. Um, in this case, I think it's probably still. So you take the odd letters from still. Um, church is another word you see a lot, and it usually usually means CE. It's abbreviated to Church of England, like CE. Um, and when you see French or German or something, it usually means, you know, what's the German word for this or the French word for that. So in this case, the French word for in. Um, 
which is Don, D-A-N-S in it. It can also be E-N. Let's just try, like if I do the sill, the sill of still, so that would be S-I-L. And then the church is probably here, which means that this, the definition is still. Um, let's put the C-E there. So that, oh, that looks pretty much, that looks like silence, doesn't it? Silence as a stillness, like a if you're, you know, it could, or it could be even a, a command like silence. Um, yeah, so that would be that. So it's a SIL with the odd letters of still. En in French means in and then CE. Yeah, I'm happy, happy with that. Now let's try 19 across. Then, so sun digs with these things ultimately. Um, again, here's another question mark, so that can mean at the the whole def the whole sentence is a definition. I think I don't know how best to describe that, but it could be that the whole sentence is a definition. Um, there's some sort of pun. Um, but there still will be some sort of wordplay in there, because the word ultimately, for example, that implies usually implies you know take the ultimate letters, um, you know, the last letters of the word. So you know, it could be an S. It could be relating to S of of things. Um, Sun is usually quite often abbreviated to S. So let's put, if we put the S here, um, then we have digs with these things ultimately. Um, so think of something you dig with. It could be a spade. So let's try spades. Could that be? Um, so how does that work? So we get the S for sun. Then we've got um, pad digs. Okay, yeah, digs. I get stuck on the old verb of digs. Um, this is what I mean by sometimes when you read the, when you allow yourself to read the whole sentence, sometimes you it, the setter can completely throw you off. Um, Whereas digs, a lot of times the words are both verbs and maybe are also nouns. In this case, I think we're talking about the noun. Digs as in somewhere to live. It's a, you know, it's a slang word, I suppose, for, for somewhere to, to live. Um, so your digs could be a flat or a pad, like your bachelor pad could be your digs. So that's where the pad comes from. And then I think the E and the S come from the last letters of these things. So it's sun, S, digs is a pad, with ES, with ES, gives you spades. So, and he digs with these things, ultimately, so, you know, digs with spades. Yeah, good. Okay, let's try 16 down. Fashionable event. Um, now, usually this type of clue, when you see two word, a two-word clue, more often than not, it's a, it's what you would call like a double definition. So there's no wordplay. So it's sort of an exceptional clue in cryptic crosswords. It's more, it's a word that means both fashionable and event. They're both definitions. Um, I think I know this is. I think this is, looks like an event is a happening. And also, be good if I could type in the right place, wouldn't it? T E N I N. And also, if something is uh, fashionable, it's really happening, isn't it? Sounds, you know, quite a sort of exp uh, adjective you use in the sixties, maybe. <laughs> it's really happening. There's an event. Okay, I'm happy with that as well. Um, let's try fifteen across then. So, a new job, daughter secured. Um, couple of things here. Daughter in cryptic crosswords is nearly always a D. Um, a is more often than not literally just the letter A. A new quite often is the letter N. So it's like a, a abbrevi abbreviated to N. So, and then secured could be the definition. So if secured is the definition. Um, that means the last letter of this word could be daughter, would be related to the daughter part, so it could be a D there. Um, maybe the first couple of letters are A-N for A-new, 
So now we're looking for a word for job here. And then ultimately the whole clue will mean secured. Um, another word for job. What is a chore? Okay, so then the word is anchored. I like that. So A-N chored, anchored, which means secured. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, let's try it down then. Cons um, relieved after conservative quit. Again, there's not one of these words like after or um, with or whatever they sort of, or before, for example, they give an idea of where, of a word, part of the word play where maybe one of the words comes after another one in, in the definition. And quite often conservative is a, is abbreviated to C or you can, sometimes it's shortened to con, C-O-N, or sometimes it's, it's a Tory. So you, you know, quite often you'll see, you know, answers ending in Tory and there's some sort of conservative reference in there. So that, and because it's after relieved, and I think relieved after conservative here is the word play and the word means quit. So I think this one, if there's a C for conservative, then relieved, um, and it means quit. Okay, I think this is eased or relieved. And put together, ceased means quit, doesn't it? Means finished. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's move on. Um, which one we do now? Let's try five down. Smashing piece of luck in golf. Smashing is one of those things that it could indicate a, an anagram. Um which would then make golf or lock in golf a definition. Is there a word for lock in golf? Um, so if that's not the case, if it's maybe, like again, sometimes the setter puts words in to throw you off the scent to make it, make it look like an anagram when it's not. Um, so maybe the actual definition is smashing. And it's a piece of luck in golf. Um... Now, because the the definition, let's say it is a definition and it's smashing, it's likely that the, the word, the answer is going to end in ing as well. So if we put ing here, and that would make me feel that that could refer to the in and golf, as a lot of the times is abbreviated to, to G. So we have in G, in golf here. So now we need a piece of luck. In golf, a piece of luck could refer to like part of L U C. Um, it's not that word. It means smashing. Um, the overall word means smashing a piece of luck. A break. If you catch a break or you get a break, that's a piece of luck, isn't it? I think I've just typed something wrong there. And breaking means smashing, doesn't it? So a piece of luck is a break. In is in. Quite often, again, sometimes the, the word is just put straight into the answer. And G is the anagram, or is the abbreviation of golf. So yeah, okay, I'm happy with that as well. Now let's look at one across again, because we've got quite a lot of letters there now. Um... Hopefully we can chuck, like, you know, this looks like throw or through, isn't it? This, what's the clue again? Have a pet baby oil worth being trained. Okay, yeah, this is the, the anagram of um, baby oil and worth. Um, and it's 5161. One. It's probably an A. Ah. I think so. Let's put the A there. This does look like throw. So throw, throw a, throw a, a wobbly. O B B L Y. 
That definitely fits. Now, how is how is throw a wobbly mean have a pet? Hmm. Throw a wobbly is like have a tantrum. To get annoyed. I'll have to come back. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident based on the anagram. I'm pretty confident that that's the answer, but I'm not really sure why that means have a pet. Um... I'll have a, th I'll have a think. Okay, well, let's try six down. Uh, difficulty losing first match. So what does this mean? Does it mean match, first match, or does it mean difficulty? Losing first match. Sometimes when you see words like losing, that means, um, you know, it's a word and then you take something away from it. So based on the sort of the order here, it would make me feel that difficulty losing first is the wordplay and the definition is match. So we think of a word for difficulty and it loses its first letter. And then that means match. A word for a match, for a match. And a match can be... Ooh. What can that be? I'm not sure. Let's try 10 across and we'll come back. Good stroll through wood. Good very often is just an abbreviation and it's a G. Stroll through wood. So maybe the definition is wood. And then we've got the G for good here. And then a word that means stroll through. Or stroll. Stroll through. It must mean stroll through. To stroll through something is to wander, to roam. And the answer means wood. So it could be like a type of wood or another word for wood, like a forest, that type of thing. Oi. Not sure. But if, if the G's right, let's go back here to the um, six down. Difficulty losing first match. So if we think it means match, okay, a light is a match. Now, why would that be light? I suppose it, difficulty losing first. So, oh, uh, it could be plight means difficulty, doesn't it? So if you take the first letter of plight away, you're left with light, which means match. Like if you got a light, you got a match. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Okay, so that, that makes me feel I'm, I'm I'm on the right lines here too. So we're looking for a word for a wood. Um, glade. Is that a wood? Oh, hang on. Grove is a wood. I know grove is a wood because I'm from Derry and uh, Derry in Irish means dura, which is an oak grove. Um... So I think G, rove. Rove is stroll through. And if you rove about, like a wild rover. Yeah, okay. Grove means wood. Happy with that. Let's try, so just to be clear, just to go back on that again. So good is abbreviated to G. Stroll through means rove. And the whole thing means wood. So a grove. Yeah. Seven down. Concerned editor is after book alternative. Um, one here in this crosswords editor nearly always means ed, nearly always. Um, and it's after book alternative, so it makes me feel that editor is at the end of the word and concerned is the actual definition. So the word play starts here with editor, and it's it's placed after book alternative, like a word for book alternative or 
Where's the clue? Look, so the clue's got a D here. So I think this is what the editor goes here. So this is at the end. So that means the word means concerned. Is after book alternative. Um, now book has a few different abbreviations. It can be OT for Old Testament or NT for New Testament. But sometimes that means books as well. Um, or it can just be a B for book. Um, and then a word for alternative. And it means concerned. Oh, I think it's bothered. Got that more from the definition. We need to be bothered is to be concerned. So it's book. Then. Other. Other means alternative. The book. Other is alternative. And then ed for editor. After. Um, yeah. And it means. Uh, it means uh, concerned. Cool. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Um, 12 across describes the main points of small boats. Right. Describes the main points of small boats. What's the definition here? The only word I can see here that um, can mean something in a cryptic way is a uh, small, sometimes abbreviated to an S. So could it mean boats and that something ends in S? Or is it small? And the other word, the main, sometimes main in this is, refers to the old word for the for the sea as well. Um, you know, describes the main could be I mean watery, for example, or you know something describing the, the sea. But I'm not sure, I think. Describes the main points of small boats. That's why I don't I'm trying to think of words for boats. Yacht or maybe it's, so is it could the definition be describes the main points small boats oh describes the main oh, I think it could be sketches somewhere in the back of my head I think a catch is a boat. Um, so the S could be small and then catches could be boats. I'm describing the main points. So if someone is sort of sketching, describes the main points, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Yeah, I think sketches looks right. I think we'll find out later, I suppose. Um, let's try 27 across now. We're Getting towards the end, hopefully. Um, idiot with rant about historical convention. So here we have the word with, which may imply that the word play is here. Um, about can mean put the words, you know, one word outside another one. The letters of one word outside the other one, so that they're about it. Or it can also mean an anagram. Um, if that's the case, let's say it's an anagram, then the definition maybe, and there's nine letters here, so I'm just looking here, idiot with rant. Let's say we put idiot with rant and made it an anagram, and it means historical convention. The definition is historical convention. Um, tradition. Tradition, I think, could be right. Because that's an anagram. It looks, I think that's an anagram of idiot with rant. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's try 25 down. I in river go belly up. So I in river go belly up. To 
go belly up. The business goes belly up. It's sort of not good news, is it? Um, I think you know the eye and river that this. I think this is the wordplay, and go belly up is a definition. Of a l go belly up. Fail. So I. Is literally I, and in a river, F A L, Val. There must be a river, Val, because I'm pretty confident go belly up is a definition here. There must be a river somewhere in the UK, maybe called, called Val. I'll look it up after this. Um, Okay, 17 down. Tape group finally just in case. And cryptic crosswords that um, group quite often means set, like a set is a group. Um, finally is about like that ultimately we talked about earlier where it refers to like the last letter of a word. So it could be the last letter of group or the last letter of just maybe. Things like hyphens don't mean much in a, in a cryptic crosswords. They're just there to throw you off or make you scan the, the clue a bit differently. So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, just ignore hyphens, I think, mostly, is a good rule. Um, so it could mean tape or cassette. How does that work? Cassette. Well, we've got case. So it could be, okay, let's, let me type it out and then we'll work it out. I think, I think this is right because, so we have case, C-A-S-E. And finally, of just, which is a T. And then we have group. Oh, it is, it is set, like I said. So we have set um, inside. We have set and the final um, letter of just, which is a T, inside the word case, cassette, and it means tape. Yeah? Cool. Okay, 21 across. We're back to that one again. Work out. Oh, let's try 22 down. Have we looked at that yet? Group keeping base spotless. Group. We've had that group. We had a group in the previous um, clue as well, didn't we? Um, group keeping base spotless. I think this is clean. Why did it always do that? Clean. Can't type anymore. Clean. So what a group. A group in this case, I think, is a clan. Keeping base spotless. Why is base an E? I don't know. Keeping base spotless. So it means spotless. The definition is spotless. Which is clean. Base. Must be an abbreviation. Or base is E. I don't know why. But I think that works. Let's look at 21 across. That, just looking at that word now. It looks like exercise. I'm just trying to see. Go back. So work out tax without a sign of hesitation. Okay, I see why it's exercise. Um, one second. So, a word for tax is excise. So, the, the, the clue, the definition of this clue is um, workout or to work out, which is exercise. So, we have tax, excise, without sign of hesitation. I think here without means as an outside of. You know, on the outside of. So, excise on the outside of sign of hesitation, which is er. Um, now we get the exercise. Does that make sense? So, without here is an, like an indicator of the wordplay. Right, last one. A particular doc. 
Now, this is a question mark as well, so it's going to be some sort of joke or pun or something. And it means, so it'll mean, the answer will mean particular and it will also mean doc. Um, so there's no particular wordplay here, it's just a double definition. Dock. Dock can be a port. Dock is also when you you can dock points, can't even take stuff off. You dock you dock a cat or a dog. Oh, I like this. I think I've got particular okay. This is quite funny. This one this is D. Tail. So, oh, but let's just go back to the. Can I go back? I have my computer puzzle. Um, so to detail something, to detail it is actually you know, to take the tail off. So you dock it. A detail is a particular as well. Um. Okay, so we got to the end of the crossword. Hopefully, you've you stuck with it and you've um. You've enjoyed that. So I say it's the first first one of these I've done. Um, but I really enjoyed doing the cryptic crosswords, and I like. You know, I'm going to keep doing these. Um, let me know what you liked about what I've done, or if you like me to what you didn't like as well in the comments. Um, and if you want to see more, then you know, please give me a like and subscribe as well. Um, I'm thinking about doing like a series of short videos or shorter videos where I talk about particular types of clues that you'll find in cryptic crosswords just so you can help identify them a bit more so like the anagram clues or the hidden word clues that type of thing and just do specific videos just on those types of clues you know like a, like a set of um instructional videos but i'll definitely keep doing these um these solves as well and i'll try and do it at a time where i'm not going to get interrupted so it, it says two hours and 16 minutes there but you know i think it probably took about i don't know exactly how long but 30 40 minutes just for me with me chatting as well anyway i hope you like that um i hope to see you again soon okay thanks bye